exchanged a few messages with Kevin from Mr. Factotum's workshop earlier on today. And he was asking what was happening down in the, my workshop. I didn't realise how long it's been since I've posted anything about the Powerfeed project, so I thought I'd better do something a bit quick. I'm going for the Tuft belt drive, and it's probably the easiest method. I've already fitted one to the motor, which as I think I previously mentioned, isn't the best, but it's going to allow me to set everything up and go from there with it. This video is more going to be concentrating on the static element. I need to get our little magnet there to fit on the end of the shaft. There is plenty of clearance through the back that it will fit comfortably over the bearing position. But I do need to make a plate up that the magnet and the motor will fit to, which is going to hang down below the bed. So what I've got is a rather nice chunk of aluminium. It's 300 by 150 by 15 mil thick. I'm going to have to take the magnet, obviously, so the wrong way around. Position it centrally. Rebate it down, I think, about 3 to 4 millimetres so that it fits fresh to the original casting. And then, obviously, notch out for where the cables come back through because this will be in this direction. That should give me plenty of room here, if I can reach for it, to actually mount the motor in the necessary position. And then hopefully cut off the excess, because the last thing I want to do is have something hanging down uh, way longer than it needs to be. So I think the only way I'm going to be able to do this, because I can't chuck it up in the lathe, because of the offset, is to try and do it on the rotary table. So it's off to the mill for this one. So, BS aside, because you know I don't like doing BS, let's see what I've actually achieved. There is the plate mounted on the end of the table. Admittedly, only with temporary bolts, I'm going to allen bolts at this moment in time. It's been rebated back by 3mm, which allows the magnet to sit flush against the original bearing casting. If you notice, inside, centralised, and fixed in with four little stainless allen bolts at this moment in time. I had to try and eliminate the chances of any um, thrust acting on the bearing and everything pulling in tight. So, one little machine spacer, which fits on the shaft and sits in. That's free moving, free running, it doesn't need to be fixed. It's only to stop the next part from being thrust forward. This is the part I said to Kevin, it's taken me six days to make. Uh, because of my limited mobility and the fact I can't stand up for long, a two-hour job took six days because I'm going to need to manage about 20 minutes at a time on the machine before I needed to sit down again. But that fits on there. Now, it will have a tapped hole to pick up on the keyway, which means it will rotate with the shaft. That's the general idea. So it is fixed. That is a fixed element to the shaft. Then we've got a little tough gear. Now I've machined this out to fit, but eventually I'm going to have to put some sort of bronze or brass bearing in there. Now this needs a steel plate on the back here, which is the same diameter as the outside of the magnet. And this will fit on, I hope, like so. And this is floating element. So even the, one part, the inner part of the shaft is fixed, this will be allowed to float and spin freely. When the magnet is engaged, the steel plate that it's fixed to will be pulled forward up against the other metal element there, which is fixed to the shaft, and that will give me the drive. That's the plan. I hope it's going to work. But if it don't, it's a learning curve that nobody else will have to follow. And of course, the final part is the motor. And the motor is going to sit probably on standoffs roughly there so it's going to be a very very short belt and if I actually go this side and pull back a bit you can see that it is quite compact or will be when it's finished uh, we're probably looking at about five inches 125 millimeters of extra length on the table which is exactly the same as the handle was so I haven't actually lost any work in space so, 
well, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? So besides all the progress being made, I have actually made some progress in the workshop, albeit only every now and again, because unfortunately the wife had to go and have an operation and she's had plates and pins put in her one foot, which means she's not very mobile. So it means I've got to take up the slack somewhat, even though she hates it. And I've got an addition. This was a donation, not from anyone on YouTube, from a family friend. I repaired and sprayed a guitar, believe it or not. And because I wouldn't accept any money because it was family, he went out and bought me a nice little compressor. So I've got airlines to run through the shed. So I hope Ian Matthews doesn't get too jealous because I've got all this floor space. But it means that I can roll around on my chair and get to everywhere nice and easy and limit the amount of time I need standing. Hope you've enjoyed it. Not much content again. Big, big thank you to all the new subscribers, all the old subscribers, and everyone that's commented and liked. Oh, and I've got stickers, and I've got a board, so I'm going to have to get this one sorted as well. Later.